This is Human Trafficking Prevention Month, a time when we should be paying attention to this very real problem enhanced by online recruitment, many other ways in our community. In fact, in many communities where victims are being mistreated almost right in front of us, we don't even know it. How bad is the problem? What's being done about it? Mina Patel Davis is the director of the Mayor's Office of Human Trafficking and Domestic Violence and joins me now this morning. How would you describe the human trafficking problem in Houston and what form does it take? Because many people aren't familiar with how many different ways human trafficking can impact us. Well, thanks for having me this morning. And you know, really the issue is that no one can really say how bad or big the problem is, because to do that, you need a prevalence and a scope study that can be really cost prohibitive. But what we do know is that trafficking exists in at least 25 industries as identified by the National Trafficking Tip Hotline. It can happen in commercial cleaning, massage industry, the hotel industry, in the construction industry, and that's just to name a few. As I said, there's 25. But one way to think about it is if we think about the illicit massage parlors in our city let's say we have 200 of them and that there's three potential victims in each that's 600 potential victims mm. in a day just in that industry add in the other industries and it's certainly enough for the city to have dedicated resources to the issue and for us to have the robust nonprofit landscape that we have in our city to address it. Wow, putting it that way, that really puts the numbers to it and it kind of makes it eye-opening. So the mayor's office has been pretty aggressive about all of this. Talk about what efforts you've been making to try to make the results less alarming and how do you measure the results? Sure, there's a lot of ways that we work. So the first thing we do is work to institutionalize the city's response. We've mobilized city departments to engage based on their function. So our health department, screens and refers potential victims directly to services. Our procurement department has a zero tolerance for trafficking in all city contracts. And the reason that's important is the biggest thing we procure is labor. We've also ran massive media campaigns that have attained impressions in the 100 million. We've run anti-luring campaigns. You mentioned children and online luring to keep children safe online. Uh, the third thing we work to do is also ensure that we're filling services gaps. When we started, the nonprofit community here was telling us that there were access, uh, there were gaps in access to housing, medical, and psychiatric services. And we bridged those gaps with the help of critical partners like the Salvation Army and Ben Todd. Finally, we were the first city in the country to have a position like this. Mm -hmm. That was, we were responsible for mining all of the opportunity that exists within city government. So we've been very deliberate about replicating our efforts to other mayors offices. Uh, there's a nexus between natural disasters and the increase of trafficking. So we've instituted responses to Hurricane Harvey, Winter Storm Uri. Of course, the pandemic has had its own impact. Um, and most recently, our division led the development of the Human Rights Plan for the World Cup bid, much of which involves trafficking. So let me ask you, what kind of interaction goes on between the city and the county and federal governments? Is there an interaction among you? Sure, the federal government has its own really robust response. They've asked us to travel to different countries, to talk to government and officials, to expand trafficking responses. The governor's office funds our services report. We've also informally advised Fort Bend counties, Galveston counties, when they started their response. Harris County has some people that are working with the commissioners who are doing awareness events, among other things. Sheriff Ed Gonzalez was a big influence on the city having its own response when he was at the city. Mm -hmm. And also our HPD leads a multi-jurisdictional task force that spans around the greater Houston area. Mayor's office has also added domestic violence to that, to the moniker or to the responsibilities, if you will. How much does that add to your plate? Because you, human trafficking is enough as it is, but domestic violence numbers have been going up through the years, have they not? Yeah, we're no strangers to hard work here. It adds a lot to our plate, but we have a really dedicated team. We were happy to take it on as council member came and brought it to the mayor's attention. The mayor asked us to step up and of course we're going to. Um, as we saw a rise in the number of instances and the number of violent instances, right? Mm -hmm. There were more and more instances in the news of children being hurt and shot when these situations were escalating between families, officers were being shot and at least one instance an officer was killed on site. So there's really important for us to intervene and some of the things we did is to start a mental health intervention helpline for instance that project ran only for two months because funding is limited but we wanted to try to intervene before the 
the, the instance of violence got so bad that people were starting to get shot and killed. Mm -hmm. um, so it was important for us to do it because of what we were seeing with the pandemic and the increase in instances and calls. So what are some of the ways the community can help eradicate this problem, both the human trafficking, uh, primarily the human trafficking, that's the main conversation today. What would you suggest the community can do to help? Sure, so the first thing I'd say, is start by assessing your sphere of influence. Do you work in a corporation? Do you procure items? Do you have a supply chain? Do you have employees? Do you pay them fairly? I'd also encourage men, and I say this respectfully, to be counterculture. There are a lot of things in our culture that are very normalized and acceptable that actually fuel the sex industry. The other thing is a lot of people will call our office. We're happy to get those calls and say, how can I get involved? It's a deeply personal journey. There people that can can and like to write checks and fund the many organizations in our city. There are people that want to work with domestic minor victims of sex trafficking. There are people that want to help international victims of trafficking. There are people that want to do donation drives. So the first thing to do is go to our website, humantraffickinghouston.org, and learn about the you learn about the city's response. Make sure you're not afraid to report a tip. The tip hotline number is 888-3737-888. Very easy to remember, very easy to store it in your phone. You can do it anonymously. So those are just some of the suggestions I have about how people can start to help. And I will put that information on our website as well so we hopefully can help people get involved and help you. Mino Patel Davis, thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for all you do in that office that helps make our community better. Thank you.